Hi, and welcome to the latest Democracy 4 developer blog. I'm Cliff, uh, one of the coders on it and designers and uh, the main designer. Um, I'm wearing my SpaceX hat because they're, they're launching two, I think three things today, something ridiculous. Um, so why not? Anyway, so uh, what's been going on in Democracy 4? Quite a lot, actually. I was thinking um, th that, um, <clears throat> Excuse me. At this point, I'd be able to like do a, 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 like just a playthrough of the game and go, look, you know, this is how I play the game. Um, but actually, we've got so much um, stuff has changed and improved in the last two weeks um, that I'm just going to talk about that really this time. I would like to do a playthrough because I enjoy talking about my decisions as I go through, um, and I find it kind of fun. But there's quite a lot of uh, stuff that's still changing. Um, we are in alpha still. This is build uh, one. 1.08 with some extra bits. Uh, 1.09 will be coming in about a week, maybe, I think, maybe a little bit longer. Um, we will be going into early access after that. I've already submitted it to Steam um, to be in early access on Steam, and uh, we might be on other stores as well, I don't know. So um, interestingly, uh, the, the price of the game, if you want to uh, buy it now and get, and get access to it, um, a lot of people will know it's $26.99. Um, that's not a price on Steam. I didn't know this. Um, but you can only select certain prices and I think they're $24.99 and $29.99. So I'm not going to punish anyone who's like bought the game early because it's really appreciated. So I was going to have it at $26.99 on Steam but it's going to be $29.99 because it has to be. Um, so uh, you, you're kind of getting a good deal if you, if you get it now. Um, not intentional, it's just like Stupid Cliff didn't check that that was a valid Steam price. I don't know why it is. I mean, you know, who cares? Anyway, so what have we been doing? Loads of stuff, loads of stuff. If I go into the new policy screen, um, let's look through some new policies. Um, well, let's look at this because this is a new one. Um, this is new, the estimated effects. So it doesn't tell you everything. Um, so it will tell you it has a like this is a positive income on this and a negative income on that you don't know how big it is but if you're um kind of looking for a policy to fix a certain problem and you're thinking oh you know will the social justice foundation do that um then you can look here and sort of go oh it does or it doesn't um i put off doing this for a long time because i thought it might make the game a little bit too easy but I think just having that but not uh, showing the exact number is kind of helpful. If you're wondering about some of those policies that have both positive and negative effects, depending, um, this is assuming that the policy is set at 0.5. So that is the default if you just uh, implement a policy and, and, and don't do anything else. So if I, so if I do that, it will be a 0.5 and, and those will be the effects. Uh, so that's a new thing anyway. Um, Tell me what you think about that. Loads of people asked for it. I worry that it makes the game a little bit too easy, but I, I think we've got a nice balance there anyway. Something else that's in the game that I, I, I think only kind of like hardcore players are really going to care about, and we're going to improve it to make it um, more in depth than that. Um, is this? If I hover there, you get a little chart. Now, depressingly, at the moment, because I'm slack, not slack. Um, is that a lot of them are, are, are like simple linear things. They're not all linear though. Um, I don't know off the top of my head one that isn't. <laughs> uh, some tax things are often quite not linear. Um, I don't know. Uh, oh, there you go. So um, this is kind of like showing you uh, the effect. You can work it out by doing this, right? So if you look at the effect on motorists up there as I go up, it's like, yeah, petrol tax, that's fine. That's fine, and then it's like, seriously, are you kidding? And then it's like, I hate you, I hate you, now I can't afford to drive. And so it's not linear. Um, it's making me think of Deep Space Nine. Uh, so you can see that there, and that little black dot, um, which I can't point to because of, you know, technolo technology. Um, that little black dot there on each one shows where we are on each curve. I think it's kind of helpful. Um, and also it encourages me to do um, more interesting effects that are not linear and are, you know, quadratic or, or mathsy. Um, so we will be doing that. 
Um, and also, if like you're a modder and you're doing a mod and you put it in the game, you sort of think, well, I'm not sure that's really working as it should, um, you'll be able to just hover over and go, yep, that relationship is right. Excel um, has not undone all my work. Uh, so that's a new thing. So we've got some new uh, policies that have gone in. Um, so where are they? Well, uh, I think Law and Order is going to be one. In fact, welfare should be the other one, and it's not. It's under public services. Drug treatment scheme. I don't know, is that public service or is that welfare? It's probably public service, isn't it? Because it's like health. It's hard to tell. Anyway, so drug treatment scheme. Basically, you want to spend money to fix uh, drug addiction in your country um, when that becomes a problem. For most countries, it isn't a problem, but if you uh, legalise a lot of hard drugs, it will become a problem. I think if you have a lot of crime as well and poverty, you also get it. Um, I don't currently have a drug problem. <laughs> he says desperately to YouTube, I do not have a drug problem. Um, just chocolate. Um, so yeah, drug treatment scheme is a new thing. It's, it's just a very targeted health thing. Um, another thing that we've got is a drug enforcement agency, the DEA. Is that Hank from Breaking Bad? I think. Um, you know, specialist police, sniffer dogs, that sort of thing. Um, so that's a new policy uh, that's gone in. The Laffer Curve is in. Oh my God, should we do a whole video about the Laffer Curve? Just to annoy people who go, the Laffer Curve has been disproven. The Laffer Curve has not been disproven. Um, it's, it's intuitively obvious. Um, what people dispute is where the Laffer Curve is. So this is Cliff's Economics 101. What is the Laffer Curve? The Laffer Curve is the premise that raising tax beyond a certain point does not bring in more tax revenue, which seems mathematically ridiculous, right? So, um, but it's not. Okay, so um, here's the income from income tax. Um, it's always going up if, if I do this. That is the crude impact, right? So that is looking at everyone's imp everyone in the country, how much they earn, having a, 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 a sort of generally progressive effect on income and how much I will bring in, right? So you might think there's no Laffer curve here, Clev, but the Laffer curve is actually modeled in the way it should be. So um, here we bring in 433 billion, there we bring in 867 billion, or do we? because it depends on GDP. You know, it's GDP really drops a lot if I have massive income tax, okay? Um, if we look in here, you can see the influences to income, one of which is GDP. And this is its current level. So we, we are only taking in 84% of the income tax we theoretically would because of the level of, uh, that GDP is currently at. If GDP fell massively, then um, we'd, we'd bring in less. Actually, th that chart isn't very helpful at this point. That is, I don't know, maybe it is. Yeah, maybe I should remove that chart because this is a, this is a multiplier. This isn't, um, this isn't a normal thing. So there is an equation in there on, on uh, all major taxes, including income tax now. Um, there always has been, saying um, that they are scaled to some extent by GDP, also to the extent my people have just switched to Bitcoin, which we can't tax easily. Anyway, so um, yeah, if, if GDP is really low, we won't bring in much income tax. That's obvious, right? GDP is really high and we're in a boom, the government brings in more income tax. Uh, this is a big dilemma for governments because when the country is doing really well, they bring in loads of tax, which they don't need because hardly anyone needs unemployment benefit. When the country's doing really badly, no one's paying income tax, they're not earning anything. The government doesn't earn any money and it can't afford to pay unemployment to all the extra people that suddenly need it. It's one of the big dilemmas and problems of government. So if we all accept that um, uh, income tax is scaled by GDP, the Laffer curve is basically saying that this effect, that's the Laffer curve, right? So we're saying if GDP goes, if uh, income tax goes up, if all taxes go up, GDP will go down. Um, now, it could be that this rise is offset by the effect of that fall on this amount. And when that happens, what that means is you put up taxes and you brought in less revenue. Okay, and people argue as to whether or not that has happened at certain points in British history, in American history and whatever, and at what point 
um, is the sweet spot. So you have kind of like a curve of um, money you can get from income tax if you take this into account and you have to imply that curve because GDP can be affected by other things. Yes, it's a complex game. So um, yeah, th there is a point uh, of tax at which point it makes no sense to keep raising it if you want to actually bring in income. Okay, there are, there are other reasons for income tax. Um, uh, for example, if you're, if you're hoping to like uh, prevent inequality or you don't think anyone should be allowed to earn beyond a certain amount, um, if, you have, if you have that kind of, I don't want to say moral, but I'm going to say moral um, approach to taxation, um, sure, but if you just want income, then there, there are kind of diminishing returns. That's the Laffer curve. Now, what, why? Why, uh, why is the Laffer curve a thing? The principle is that basically, especially with the wealthy, especially with the wealthy, if you put tax up beyond a certain point, they will just um, work less. Um, for a lot of people, you can't do that. Okay, if you've got a normal job, you can't like scale down your hours as you see fit. But some people can. If you're like self-employed, if you're, um, you know, you're some sort of consultant or lawyer or doctor or whatever, or even like an indie game developer with hit games. Um, like I can decide, it's Sunday, I'm working, right? I can decide whether or not, and I worked yesterday, I can decide how many hours I put in, and um, that's up to me, and I can do that to make more money, theoretically. <laughs> um, and it, here in the UK, the top rate of tax at the moment is 45%, so if I was paying the top rate of tax and that, that went to 80%, maybe I wouldn't work on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, therefore, I would create less output. GDP would fall. Okay, that's one thing. The other thing is if you're like 62 and retirement age is 65 and you're thinking, oh, I've done quite well, um, maybe I'll retire a year early, and then they put up the top rate of tax, you sort of think, oh, well, that's the final straw, I'm going to retire a few years early, GDP goes down. Okay, now we can all argue at what point that kicks in. Is it 50%, is it 60%, is it 80%? Um, you know, we don't know. But that effect is in there, and that is called the Laffer Curve. Look it up on Wikipedia. I'll probably stick up Wikipedia entries behind me as I'm talking. Um, anyway, it's a thing. It's a thing that's in the game. I'm going to stop talking about it now. Some people get very angry about the Laffer Curve on the internet. They're like, that's just nonsense. Let the rich leave. Um, whatever. Uh, you know, it's up to you. But um, I think the Laffer Curve is a real thing. Um, I think it's above 50, I, I think it probably doesn't kick in until above 50%. I think that's psychological. I think it's the whole half my money is being taken by the government sort of thing. Um, the, uh, it's probably psychological. Anyway, Laffer Curve. Um, we adjusted this. They used to be called female genital mutilation, and then, which is a thing. And then um, people got very upset saying, well, what about, um, uh, you know, what about circumcision? Uh, you know, that's sexist. Um, so we changed it so it can be you're banning FGM and then you're banning circumcision as well and blah, blah, blah. Um, a, a lot of talk on Twitter about who this should upset. Should it upset religious people? Um, yeah, and we have an, uh, one of the, these sort of cool curves here. So um, the gender equality thing is when you ban FGM um, and then it, it kind of stays level. Anyway, we, we adjusted that so that it's it's not just one gender. I just thought I'd mention it. Um, I want to talk about nuclear fission and scaled costs. Nuclear fission is now policy. We got rid of a dilemma to do with, we'd like to build a nuclear power station, what do you think? And made it a policy, because it's like an ongoing thing, right? So, in countries that have the technology for nuclear power, so not all of them, but UK and US are uh, currently in, and they both obviously do. Um, this is a policy. It is an uncancelable policy. You have to have a view on nuclear power. So you can be German, decommission now, get rid of the existing power stations. Um, you can say, well, we've got some, and um, we'll keep them going until end of life, and then we'll decommission them. You can extend their life. You can build extra ones, you can build loads, and then you can start subsidising massively. Okay, so anyway, this has been policy that's in, that doesn't matter, it's cool, but whatever. Um, but if you, look at, uh, if you look at the cost at the bottom, it is not linear um, at all. In fact, it goes bananas at the, at the top there, because uh, nuclear, nuclear power can get very expensive. Um, but we don't, want a we don't want a huge cost here when you're just decommissioning. I mean, like th that's just like admin costs there. You know, it's like paperwork for government, isn't it? Um, 
so expansion and and like subsidies that's that's where we really it really starts costing money um so uh, this is a new thing is what i'm getting at so um although it's not represented here there is a there is an equation which we support now that gives us a curved cost or income because it used to just be linear if you look at any other policy um the uh the, the cost of that is linear along this okay between a certain minimum and a certain maximum it's a linear thing now now we can we can do more complicated things it's new new bit of the engine sort of thing uh so that's in right something i would like to say my god i've got to the end <laughs> um please vote on the front page if i if i go back um and i've got one other thing to talk about um uh, please vote for what country you would like to see added to the game next uh, which is at the main menu um, you only get one vote per version of the game uh, currently Germany is winning by a lot so if, if you definitely don't want Germany you better vote last thing I'm going to talk about is normalization this was a, uh, a really good idea we were sort of like trying various methods beforehand but um, someone came up with a, a nice equation on our forums um, and we put basically we we've sort of put that in but we've scaled it through other variables so it's kind of like a hybrid anyway the way um values in the game are calculated as they approach very high or very low values has changed what does that mean what that means is basically it's really hard to get gdp at, at 100 percent. it's really hard to get G gdp at zero percent although you can definitely do it i did it yesterday <laughs> um but not just gdp like anything like all of these variables they're they're harder to max out we have a kind of like normalization thing that's scaled with existing data so it's not too extreme what it means is the game is a bit harder now a fair bit harder actually um it was definitely too easy i know that and the um things move in less extremes so this popularity is not going to swing around as much as it used to. The opinions of each voter are not going to swing around as much as they used to. And if I look here at the start of a game in the US, we are apparently the united right. Since when has the left or the right ever been united? Anyway, whatever. Um, we've only got like hardly any members and activists. Okay. And if you look here at the distribution of um, what people think about us and the opposition, um, quite a few people are fanatically opposed, actually. Um, but the mass of people are generally in the middle. If we if we go somewhere else to look at the uh, the Overton window, um, the people are kind of all over the place, and 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 quite kind of uh, you know middling opinions. There's not so many like hard reds and greens. Um, it's basically a change to the structure of the simulation that that makes it more stable. Put that in yesterday tested it all day yesterday i'm going to do a bit more testing today and tomorrow um because i've only been testing on the uk yet i haven't tested it on the us uh, i'm going to put a lot of time into that before i release it i think when i do people will will really like it it took a while to to get the scaling right between that and the normal system anyway it's it's maths and code um but it's it, it's going to be really good so um I will be back in 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 two weeks. Um, I think we will have another country in then, which will be cool. We'll probably have a like Steam coming soon page by then. I hope. Um, anyway, so this is Democracy Four. You can get it now at twenty six ninety nine. The, the the exciting price um, compared to Steam, and um, you get access to the build immediately. Thank you to everyone who is uh, buying the game and playing the game. It's much appreciated. It stops us worrying about whether or not it's going to sell. Um, and uh, if you like these videos, please click the thumbs up and subscribe and things like that. Um, if you like the game, please tell your friends about it because um, it, it that's the best way. Like, you know, people always want to hear their friends go like, I'm playing this game, it's really cool, rather than just like seeing an advert or, or like, uh, you know, a website review or whatever. It, it's really helpful to tell your friends about the game. Um, we really appreciate it when people do that. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in two weeks.